uh, roughly 20 degrees today. The bees are sure taking flight. Uh, they're sure after the dry supplement feeders. Um, we're going through assessing today and dropping patties. Uh, we've assessed roughly, I don't know, five or 600 hives now. Um, different day, different eyes. Uh, we're finding a few more losses than, last, than yesterday. Uh, like, not dead ones, but just the three frames and under. So I'm not sure exactly what it would be, about 20% or so. Um, so I think they just ran out of time. But uh, the rest of them seem to be holding their own and they're, and they're taking advantage of this nice day. So, um, so we'll keep at it and we're gonna have to get some liquid feed out to these guys too, because for the most part they're good, but they're just, you know, they could use a little bit of liquid. So uh, we'll get this assessment done and the patties down. As we make our medications round, I guess we're going to be putting some pails on them too. Here's uh, there's a bad yard I just dug into, but that hive starved. That one died. That one has you know, maybe two frames of bees. That one is maybe a frame and a half. You know, they just ran out of time, probably all the queens. A uh, frame of bees there, and just a little handful of bees there. These guys are just running out of time. So I'm thinking maybe old queens. Outright losses. Okay, here's kind of what I'm seeing. Uh, I don't have smoke with me right now, so the bees are a little bit cranky. Uh, so we have some good looking hives, you know, nothing wrong with these. This is probably hard to tell for, through the camera lens here, but they're filling up pretty much all the space between the frames. Same with these guys, these guys are easily eight frames. Here's a, a little three framer. This is a lot of the, the smaller ones I'm finding. Just, uh, you know, just filling up two or three seams of bees there. I like to see these big ones. Boxes, they call these ones. Those are boxes of bees. You know, eight frames sitting in there, but then you got another little three framer in here. See, just one, two, three. Just right in there. So I'm not shaking them out because I'm. Uh, there's another three framer. Sometimes these little guys can bounce back. You know, filling two or three seams of bees there. So I count them as losses. They're not necessarily losses yet, but they're risky. They're right on the edge. There's one. Uh, there's probably an eight. We've got bees all the way down bottom. To top to bottom all the way through there so those big ones I'm gonna mark as blues and these these guys I'm gonna mark as red as uh, as cautions it's basically what I'm seeing I'm just in the process of moving some hives out of this big holding yard into my summer yards. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be grabbing the hives that I marked as medium and then the hives that I marked as strong and I'm going to leave these hives like this one here. Uh, I don't have a tag on it so that means that it's weak. So I'm going to leave these weak ones behind and I'm just going to group together the uh, strong and the medium ones together and move them out. So that's it's only one leaving from that pallet, one leaving from that pallet. I think you kind of get the point here. Both those ones are coming. So I'm just bringing the strong ones with me and leaving the weak ones behind. And as I move these hives out, uh, there's going to be, you know, the bees are still foraging a little bit. So as these strong ones get taken away, they're going to drift into the smaller ones to kind of boost them a little bit. So that's not going to hurt anything. So that's what I'm going to be doing.
So I have two yards on. I forgot to take my syrup tank off, so I couldn't fit the third. But anyways, this is what my yard looks like now. These are my small hives. We are going to go through those hives uh, this weekend and we're going to identify the viable ones. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. We're going to pick a cool day and I'll get the guys to, uh, to do all the lifting for me and then get most of these hives moved out to their summer yards. So I'm going to park this up by the honey house and call it a night. Today we're working at salvaging some of the weaker colonies. Um, what we're doing is we're taking the weak colony and putting them on top of a very really strong colony, um, separating it with a sheet of newspaper and the queen excluder in that way. What the idea is the, the strong colony will chew through the newspaper and mingle and merge with that smaller colony up top and then the two queens will work together within the same hive. Um, it doesn't always work, uh, just depending on the acceptance of that new queen. But um, for the most part, the two colonies merge together. The top colony gets boosted and then I'll take it later off as a split. We don't typically do this. Uh, it's a lot of work. We don't like salvaging weaker colonies. Uh, we'd rather promote the brilliance from the strong colonies. We'd like taking the full fresh splits off them. Um, but this year, uh, we've gone through winter a little bit tougher. So we have like 300 or so uh, smaller frame colonies. I'm talking like frame, two frame of bees. They just below that population threshold. They, they need just a little bit of a boost. So what we're doing in a sense is removing the split from these strong colonies by uh, building a colony on top of them. It's a lot of work and uh, we hope it pays off. Strong units. We put uh, a layer of newspaper down. And this forces the bees to chew through the newspaper, and by the time they get through it, the uh, the scent of the queen below and the scent of the queen up the top is merged. A little bit of honeybee healthy just to mask some scents. 
and then they can merge on a very calm and docile state so there's less fighting. These bees that we're uh, putting the weak ones on top are at least nine to ten frames of frames of bees. They're about to go through a hatch so we need to find space for them anyway. We're gonna go up into our salvage hives. So Carrie's just gonna lift this hive as probably like a a frame of bees, frame and a half of bees. And we just put it up on top. Typically the bees will merge together without any fight and then run a two queen colony. So right now what we're doing is we have 10 frames of bees down here with the queen. They're gonna merge up with like the frame and a half of bees and the queen up top. These bees are gonna acquire some population and hopefully salvage this hive. And by doing that, we're taking a split out of the strong hive, if you can kind of see what we're doing. Trying to keep all of these boxes full of bees. I'm just making my Sunday afternoon uh, spot check round. I just do uh, a run around just to see what's going on inside of the hives, just to try to prepare the week ahead and line up the crew to get a bunch of work done this week. Um, I'm noticing my feeders are empty. I got to get right on that. And uh, just, I'm just poking my nose into some of these uh, smaller hives we put on top of the big ones for a boost. And I just want to take a look to see, I don't want to disturb these guys. I typically like to leave them at least a week, uh, maybe more, to get that brood nest up top established before I uh, disturb them at all. Um, I don't want to interrupt any of the, uh, the merging process between the two colonies. So uh, I'll just take a peek in a colony here and I'll, we'll see what's going on. I'm going to do this with as little disturbance as possible. Um, I just want to see... There we go. So as you can see, the bottom colony has moved up into the top box. So we have uh, re-established the bee population up top. Um, so now they're above that critical threshold of bees. Okay, I'll just pull a few frames want to see um, what's going on inside. I want to see if that queen is alive and generally I don't have to find her. I just have to uh, look to see if there's eggs. So we put this together a few days ago so if there's lots of eggs that means she's uh, expended her nest and she's growing. Okay, just gotta get in here. Frames are a little bit of a mess. Here's a good solid frame of brood, and a frame of fresh eggs. She looks like she's been accepted. We'll just try to catch a visual here. Yep, a success. I'm just taking and getting a visual. Here's a nice frame of brood. I'm not going to dig down into too many. Just want to see if it's working. And there's two frames of fresh larvae. One of eggs. This is larvae. Corner to corner. They're out of syrup. We've got to get them more syrup. There she is. Just got that all laid. So this one's a success. We'll leave uh, that side's not worked on. So two and a half. When do we do this? Uh, you guys did it. Yeah, about two and a half days ago. Two and a half days ago. So Thursday. Did that Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. So. 
Good. So initial inspection shows success. So we'll leave these guys uh, establish a good nest and then we'll pull it off as a split. So about two weeks ago we uh, grabbed our smaller nukes. Um, this is the hive that I showed a little earlier which had like a frame and a half of bees of that and a little patch of brood. We put it on top of a strong unit newspaper, an excluder, and then the strong unit underneath went up, merged with the upper unit and boosted this top unit. So what we're doing is we're dri we've uh, called out a bunch of fives that didn't winter as big as we wanted to. It's just little patches of brood. And there's about two frames like this, a brood and bees just below threshold. So we're just transferring over top the same as the, uh, the single colonies we were doing. Come back and check for acceptance. These little guys seem to be chugging along. Just they just don't have enough bees in the box to... Uh, see, there's just not enough in here. Have you found her? She's in there already. She's there? Oh. She's uh, decided to take a walk on the Queen Excluder. Hey. Really don't on like the wild so side, is she? So this is what we're doing today. Just transferring some of the fives just to get above the population threshold and then we'll come back and check them out. I'm just going to show you what we're seeing now. We are a day or two away from stripping off these top boxes uh, to re-establish them on their own. I'll just count to see what is actually going on inside. So the hives are bringing in nectar. The bees are in a good mood today. So it's a good time to divide resource. Okay, so here's one frame of fresh larvae. And on the other side. Here's a solid frame of brood. Second solid frame of brood. Third frame of brood. And this side's going back into honey. So this side is fresh uh, nectar. I'm not seeing the queen yet, but she'll be in here somewhere. So this little unit, if you look back in my videos, was you know, a very small unit, but the queen was last year's queen. It was made up in the summer, so she, we wanted to keep her around. We put her on top, the bees moved up, she was able to reestablish her nest with, with the increase in bee population, that bee threshold that I'm always talking about. She got above that and was able to start laying out her brilliance. So. This is, we're going to mark this up as a success, so what we're going to do is we're going to strip off these salvage units. Probably starting tomorrow, we're going to strip off these salvage units. Um, the nest underneath is maintaining three or four frames of brood, and we're going to put another box on top of all of our hives in the apiary within starting tomorrow, going through next week. So what we've done here is um, utilize the extra strength in the bottom colony to boost the weaker colony. And by doing that, we've pretty much removed the split from this hive. We're maintaining that, uh, we're maintaining all the work we put into those queens last summer. 
So I'm just following through. We're stripping off these salvage units up on top. Uh, we've gone through and we've identified all the units that are successful and anything that didn't merge properly, we had like five or six of them out of the batch. Uh, we just took the excluder out and we left the box on top uh, to allow that bottom queen to utilize both boxes, which we'll take later as a split. But for right now, we're taking away these top boxes and we're gonna move them out to new yards. So basically all I'm doing is stripping the boxes off. As you can see, good number of bees inside these boxes. I'm doing this in the evening because I want as many bees back home as possible. So then they can spread out the population equally between the two boxes. The only disadvantage is I don't have my hired guys in. So we put on uh, another patty. This patty isn't being used right now. But um, there's dandelion flow coming in, so the bees have lot, access to a lot of pollen. Um, they're storing some of it away, which will be used. This will be used uh, after the dandelion flow during the dearth. So what we're going to do now is we put a second box up on top. So we allow that queen to expand up into the second. Okay, so now this honey box is on top. These are honey supers. So the queen has four or four and a half frames of brood in the bottom box. It's ready to hatch, so we need space for her to put those bees. We want all these bees for the honey flow, and we want to keep that queen laying, so she's going to lay down there, and she's going to move the nest up here as that, <coughs> oh, excuse me, as that hive expands up in the top, she's going to follow the bees, and she's going to establish a nest between the two boxes. So this is the next step of my single box management, um, allowing that queen to come up and lay into the first honey box. We're not storing resources in this honey box yet. We are raising brood. Um, we have a heavy flow on right now, dandelions, wildflowers, clover's about to start on, there's spurge out there. Um, so they're gonna store a resource in here dedicated towards this brood. They're gonna use that resource to build bees and uh, the plan is, as the crops start to bloom, as we start to get into the heavy flows where they're starting to store an amount of surplus, we will move that queen back down to the bottom box and allow this top box to hatch out and backfill, and then we can harvest it. I wanna show you, this is a shout out to Keith. These bees have turned to their patties. These last uh, week and a half or so, it's been, you know, somewhat slower consumption, which I expected because of uh, all the fruit pollen coming in. Now the bees have turned to dandelion. So predominantly the bees are bringing in dandelion right now. There's a lot of nectar being brought in. These hives are getting heavy, which is fantastic. But from what I'm told, dandelion pollen isn't the most nutritious pollen. It's not balanced. And the bees need to mix the dandelion pollen with other fruit pollens like uh, berries and like apples and, you know, tree pollen. Or some supplement. So I imagine that's what these guys are doing. They're just grabbing what they need from these patties. Either that or there's a huge demand for protein underneath. Which means I'm getting another patty put on right away. This next patty 
isn't being put on for now. It's being put on for after the dandelion's done. So we're going to run into a dearth here in about a week and a half. Hopefully two weeks. We get another two weeks of good pollen flow. But as soon as the um, dandelion's done, we go into a dearth. And we've got to wait till clover. And so we'll hit probably two weeks of dearth till we wait for the clover and the bees will turn to these patties and keep their nest well nourished and moving forward. So that's my strategy with putting these patties on right now.